now? <laughs> she wants me to be away from the mic. <laughs> Switch ends. Switch ends. Are we on now? Okay. There you go. Uh, okay. Can can people hear online? <laughs> One, hey. two, three. Yeah. yeah. All right. Sounds we are good. opening with how great that worked. Yes. <laughs> Oh, uh -huh. 
Good afternoon. My name is Ann Telford and I'm the pastoral care coordinator here at McDougal United Church. This universe was born out of compassion. It is through the sure love of God that everything has come into existence. God's love sustains us and nurtures us all the days of our lives. And when our time here is finished, God's eternal love holds us and carries us safely on our journey to eternal peace. Be assured that our loved one, Burl, has found new life in the everlasting realm of God. We gather to celebrate, whether we are here in the sanctuary or on Zoom today, we celebrate the life of Burl. We gather to celebrate with one another what she has meant to us. And we are also here to share in our grief and our sorrow and to continue to support and love one another knowing that the loss of Burl in our lives will be difficult for each one. As family and friends, we can rest assured knowing that God's love never ends. And as we left up Burl's life to be celebrated, this gift from God to us, we know that she is indeed surrounded by God's eternal love. Let us join our hearts in prayer. God, we thank you that you have made each of us in your own image and given us gifts and talents with which to use. We praise you today through song, poetry, and scripture as we celebrate Burl's life and for all that you did through her. We thank you for giving us the life of Burl, and today we celebrate the legacy that she leaves behind, the years that her family and friends shared with her, the goodness and love that we saw in her, the love that we received from her, Help us to remember the grace of her heart, the generosity of her spirit, the, the sincerity of her kindness. Help us to remember all the ways that you've touched the world through her goodness. We will remain ever grateful for being blessed with Burl's presence and the light that she shone into so many lives and hearts. Now we ask that you give us strength and courage to leave her in your care confident in your promise of eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My name is Marissa Turner. I'm going to be singing now My Chains Are Gone with Amazing Grace, and my husband Joseph is playing the guitar for me.
Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Marissa and Joe, for that beautiful music. We've, uh, and, I, and I do want to thank everybody who's here and welcome everybody on Zoom and the people here. When we think over the last few weeks, over the last month, I'm sure a lot of us have thought about my mom, Burl Turner, what she means to us, the effect that she's had on our lives. And we know that she's a person who's touched the lives of many, many people. Like all of us, my mom started out as a baby on August 6th, 19, trying to remember, 1930, she came into the world. And we think about this person developing and growing the experiences that she had, the people that affected her life, that influenced her in coming to understand who she was as a person. Now, she shared these things with us in various ways, sometimes in the stories she told of her childhood. My mom really loved nature and nature's God. She felt closest to God in nature. And she was given a gift of, of, of seeing nature in her mind's eye. As she grew as a child in this world, the people around her, her parents, her grandparents, all had this influence that led her to see God. Now, we know of some of the stories of my mom growing up. I'm sure many of us have heard them, how poor they were, the school that they went to, the one-room schoolhouse, how cold it was when they got there. And how my mom had to um, memorize uh, the readings because uh, she had dyslexia. And we think about things like this, that there, there's difficulties that we face. But these difficulties teach us things. My mom, my mom had shared with Heidi how we need to take one step at a time. This is not some frivolous advice. This is an experience. We all go through very dark times in our lives. My mom went through some dark times. She didn't often share those with us. I know my home growing up was a happy home. My mom She was like sunshine. I'm sorry. <laughs> we, we've all experienced that. The way she could comfort us when we were hurting. She was 
so caring. The difficult times, I, I remember my mom talking a bit about uh, the crisis of her faith when, it, when my dad was a minister, it was difficult for her. And when I was a child, we went to church. So often my mom would cry. But as she went through her experience and her walk through life, she took one step at a time. She continued to grow, to look at the people around her, to listen and gain experience and wisdom. She cared for those that many wouldn't care for. She made all of us realize we are valuable. And all of us have in, in some ways tried to show that to the people around us. As my mom grew older, she had experiences like going to, to college. My mom made connections with people. My mom and dad would go to these reunions every year at the, the Vermilion School of Agriculture until, you know, finally there was really no one left to go to the reunions, class reunions. Both my mom and dad would visit people in the hospital and sing hymns. My mom would go and pray with people. I remember her telling me, and I had a hard time believing her, but uh, she had put a, a, transported a mattress for some lady in a shopping cart to down, near downtown Edmonton when they lived in the condominium. And I, I wonder if I heard her wrong, but, um, my parents did lots of things for people. As we all know, my mom loved the poetry, which that difficulty of dyslexia that hindered her in a lot of ways allowed her to have another gift. And that gift was the gift of memorization, to be able to memorize poems. And you're gonna hear some poems today and these would affect people, people on the street, strangers, and people would be extremely blessed to hear this old lady take the time to share a poem. It wasn't necessarily the poem, it was this person who was so loving and caring Of course, my mom thankfully met my dad, maybe not so much for some people, but for us who are descended from him, we're very thankful. And my dad was a difficult person to deal with, but my mom continued to grow and learn the patience that we all have learned from her. And they raised children and some children, were probably easier to take care of than others. But the care that a mother develops as she has children, as she nurtures them, is part of that growth from that child to this adult, to this woman, to this mother, and then to a grandmother. In a eulogy, I'm not sure exactly all the things you're supposed to say. Many people have had experiences of my mom. Her brothers and sisters growing up obviously know a lot more about her 
than we do in some ways, some of her external life. But that internal life, that part of her that she shared with us, in the little ways that she shared them, those are the things that we are going to remember. Our own experiences. Personally, I neglected my mom. I didn't appreciate her as much as I should have. Sometimes she was a little bit annoying, a little bit too affectionate, especially when you're a teenager or when you're a young man. And um, a lot of my life, I didn't really go visit her that much until later in her life that I really began to appreciate her in ways that I hadn't before. As my mom grew older, and we all grew older, we started to realize that we wouldn't have her with us always, at least not physically. We can say that we, you know, hold her in our hearts, we have these memories. But I know that the one day I'll see my mom again in God's kingdom. I'll get to see her smile, that sunshine that has blessed us, that we were blessed to experience. In the latter, the latter years of my mom's life, she started to lose her memory. It's difficult to see. Some of the poems did not come so easily, and eventually some of them began to disappear. I asked her one day after she had moved to, to Salem if she remembered any poems, and she said, yes, I do. And I said, can you, re can you remember some? Well, she says, not right now. She couldn't. But, um, Heidi once was uh, visiting her and my mom recited the 23rd Psalm. And on Remembrance Day, she remembered in Flanders Fields. And, and she had improved so much. It was such a shock that she was taken I know, I, I worked in extended care to see people sometimes for years linger on with no, not knowing anyone around them. And even though she left us so, so suddenly, I'm thankful she didn't have to suffer some of those stages of dementia. I know all of you really loved my mom. You knew her in different ways, and some of you will share some of those experiences with us. The experiences of this person who has affected us so much. In some ways, it's hard to come to a memorial service and to remember in this way in some ways, you know, I hadn't really been all that affected, even though we had another memorial service earlier. Um, the process of grieving goes on. It changes. 
we never forget that person. The pain of them not being there. Especially in times when we feel we need them. That will always be there. But we do have that hope. And we do have each other. And there is a little bit of my mom and many of you, even ones who aren't really descended from her genetically or biologically, because she's affected you. She's affected me. So I look forward to hearing some of the words from others. And I know that my mom expressed the desire that we can that we can be at peace, that we can know God. That even though we may miss her, that we have hope. And that we need to take one step each day as we face these difficulties. It's much easier to face them knowing that we had Merle Turner in our lives. Thank you. Thank you, Theodore. Um, I'm Adam Molino, grandson of Earl Turner, and uh, it's obviously been sad and hard at times hearing about when she passed. And while there is sadness, I know we can look to the joy of all of us at least having to have known her for some point in our lives. And I've been blessed to know her from ever since I was, can remember, um, whatever I can remember. <laughs> I'm not known to have the greatest memory, but I cherish many thoughts of her. Um, and many things she would say and do with us children, take us for walks in the parks and past the fire station and to the hospitals to see and help those there and give encouragement. Of course, I remember her baking, her food, her almond crescent cookies were always amazing. I ate way more than I should have. But I'll be reading, trying also to memorize this poem in her name as well. Somebody's Mother by Mary Dobrine. The woman was old and ragged and gray and bent with the chill of the winter's day. The street was wet with recent snow and the woman's feet were aged and slow. She stood at the crossing and waited long, alone, uncared for amid the throng of human beings who passed her by, nor heeded the, the glance of her anxious eyes. Down the street, oh, with laughter and shout, glad in the freedom of school let out, came the boys like a flock of sheep, hailing the snow piled white and deep. Past the woman so old and gray, hastened the children on their way, nor offered a helping hand to her, so meek, so timid, afraid to stir, lest the carriage wheels or the horse's feet should crowd her down in the slippery street. At last came one of the merry troop, the gayest lad of all the group. He passed beside her and whispered low, I'll help you go, I'll help you cross if you wish to go. She placed her aged hand in a strong young arm uh, sorry, uh, he, she, 
Her aged hand in a strong young arm she passed, uh, placed, and so without hurt or harm, he guided the trembling feet along, proud that his own were firm and strong. Then back again to his friends he went, his young heart happy and well content. She's somebody's mother, you boys you know, for all she's aged and poor and slow. And I hope some fellow will lend a hand to help my mother, you understand. If ever she's poor and old and gray, when her own dear boy is far away, and somebody's mother bowed low her head in her home that night, and the prayer she said was, God be kind to that noble boy who is somebody's pride, a somebody's son in pride and joy. Thank you. This is Olivia Lamb, and Burl Turner was her great grandma, and she's going to recite a poem. The heart of a seed buried deep so deep, a dear little plant lay fast asleep. Wakes of the sunshine creep to the light. Meeks of the voice of the raindrops bright. The little plant heard and rose to see what the wonderful outside world might be. I'm just going to add some words here about the poems that were just read. Um, The one, somebody's mother, uh, was one that mom said to any young man or group of young men that she would come across uh, while she was taking the bus or in the park or in church or any kind of gathering. And uh, the one that Olivia said um, was one that mom had learned as a child and um, probably around the same age and said it to us so many times uh, when we were um, trying to go to sleep or before we went to bed she would recite all kinds of poetry to us and that was one of them thank you I am Elena Lamb, and Grandma was my great-grandma. Let not your heart be troubled. You believed in God, believe in me also. In my Father's house are many mansions. If I go, if it were not so, I would, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. I am Xavier Lamb and Rotana was my great grandma. One day 
When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and the clouds took him out of their sight while he was going and they were gazing up towards heaven. Suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They, they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come again in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. I'm Asher Turner, and I will be reading 1 Corinthians 15, 22 and 23. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ's at his coming. I am Amelia and I will be reading 1 Corinthians 51 to 54. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For it, this crap must be in, must be put on in crum, in corruption, and this mortal must be put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on in corruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass, saying that it is written, death is swallowed up in victory. So Preston, is Preston going to do one? You're not unmute. You have to unmute yourself. Sorry, um, Preston is uh, looking after a Reese upstairs. Okay, so you're going to. I'll read the scripture. Okay. Um. I have a couple of scriptures um, to read. The first one was um, Matthew 22, uh, verse 32. Um, Matthew 22, 31. But concerning the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was spoken to you by God saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And uh, the next scripture we have too is uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. Okay, sorry. Um, But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means preside precede those who are asleep. 
For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. And the last one was uh, Hebrews 12, 1. I'm just finding it in my Bible here. Abia, you have to be quiet, honey. Uh, Hebrews 12, 1. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Um, uh, my name is Francine. I am the, um, um, I married Daniel Turner. He's not here right now. Um, and Burl was absolutely um, a beautiful, beautiful, sweet woman. She was so, she was so loving and so kind. And um, because of COVID, we weren't allowed to really visit her very much. Um, oh no, my children all came downstairs um uh yeah i just loved her dearly and i'm gonna sing a song called i can only imagine i heard i hope that the sound quality is okay for uh the video quality because we didn't have a chance to do any practice so i have the background music here on my phone and um let's give this a try i hope it works out I can only imagine what it would be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine Yeah. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. I can only imagine when that day comes and I find myself standing in the sun. I can only imagine when all i will do is forever forever worship you i can only imagine i can only imagine surrounded by your glory what will my heart feel will i dance for you jesus or in all of you be still will i stand in your presence or to my knees will i fall will i sing hallelujah will i be able to speak at all i can only imagine yes 
I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing? Hallelujah, will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. Yeah, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Yeah, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Yeah, I can only imagine. I can only imagine when all I will do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine. Anyway. I hope the song was okay. Okay, I guess you didn't hear that. Um, so I am going to, I'm going to repeat myself. I am Linda Molyneux, Burl Turner's daughter. And I'm Sarah Lamb, and Burl Turner was my grandma. And uh, Sarah is my daughter. And Rachel is on piano. Uh, she is also my daughter. And uh, we are going to sing the 90 and 9, which is uh, a hymn that I heard mom and dad sing together. And so, yeah. <laughs>
I thought I would do some closing remarks. Um, I'm not very good at this kind of thing, so. Um, but anyway, uh, in Isaiah 53, 6, it says, all we, we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Jesus not only bore our sins at the cross, but he has gained the victory over death at his resurrection. He says to us in John 11, 25 to 26, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Joshua, after taking the promised land, uh, the land of Canaan, appealed to the children of Israel, choose this day whom you will serve. And the Lord through the psalmist said, today, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that we, like my mom Burl, will not harden our hearts, but instead may listen to your word and choose to be, or choose to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. For all who believe in him have life eternal. I pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll now have our closing, and the young men that were up here with our opening will do our closing song. And um, they are uh, Joseph and Micah Turner, Theodore's boys, and the other three are David, Adam, and Jared, and they are
Thank you everyone for joining us on Zoom. I'm gonna end the recording now. <laughs>